Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, this lecture is uh, part of the advanced mathematics course uh, for high school students, which presented on the website unizor.com. That's where I suggest you to watch this lecture from because the site contains not only the video part but also some notes. And in this case, notes are important because there are a lot of calculations here which I will um, try to, to do without any errors <laughs> on, on the board. Uh, and uh, you can definitely review it all um, in the notes. So this is about volume of the pyramid. Now, the volume of the pyramid can be approached in many different cases. Unfortunately, none of these cases can be 100% rigorous on the level of the high school. Um, however, um, I have made all the preparations for this lecture to be relatively rigor rigorous as much as possible. And the preparations were, uh, were related to uh, uh, three-dimensional similarity concepts. And also there was a lecture in that particular topic related to two-dimensional area calculation as a limit the calculation of the area of triangle actually as a limit. Because right now we are going to approach the volume of the pyramid in exactly the same fashion as I did for area of the uh, triangle as a limit of some other more elementary um, objects which we can approximate our complex object which is a pyramid. Now pyramid is a complex object versus prism which is a uh, more elementary object. So the right prism is something which we have already uh, studied before and we know the volume of the of the right prism. So my idea is to explain how the volume of the pyramid can be approximated with some of the volumes of little prisms which are basically combined together make a shape close to pyramid and the smaller are the height of these prisms, the better the approximation is. So that's the whole approach. So let me just go on this particular road and um, uh, I'll, I'll try to explain the details. So first of all let's consider we have a triangular pyramid and the base lie in, well, some kind of a plane beta. Now, I will drop the perpendicular from the apex S down to the plane beta. Let's say it's point H. And now what I'm going to do is I will build an object which contains small prisms, one on the top of another, stacked one on the top of another, which together approximate the, the shape of this particular pyramid. Now, how can I do it? Well, let's divide SH, which is the height, into n equal parts, where n is some number. And the greater this number is, the pr more precise my approximation will be. And now, so let's say these are division points. So somewhere I will use H lowercase n as an index. Now, at each point of division, I draw a plane parallel to beta. Which basically intersects my pyramid at triangle A N, B N, and C N. So, on each uh, at each division point uh, H N, from H one, which is here, to H N minus one, and then H itself can be treated as H N with, with capital N. Uh, so I draw a plane, and the plane uh, intersects our pyramid um, at these points. 
I mean, it's obviously a triangle, very simple proof. Now, how can I build a prism? Now, the prism I will build based on this triangle, A, A N, B, N, and C, N. Uh, I will build the right prism, so I will um, go with the perpendiculars here, and that will be my prism. Now, the height would be exactly to the next plane, to beta n minus 1. If this is beta n, that would be beta n minus 1. So, in between these two planes, I built a right prism with bottom uh, base uh, at points a, n, b, n, c, n. Now, if I will do it at every level, my pyramid would be kind of converted into some kind of a uh, stack of the prisms which make like steps like Egyptian pyramid for instance or or uh, uh, pyramids in Mexico for instance they have these steps right so I will approximate the volume of the pyramid as the sum of the volume of these prisms and then if I will um, uh, use the larger and larger n, which make, 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 makes actually uh, taking the limit as capital N goes to infinity. My sum of the volumes of these pyramids, uh, of these prisms, will be the approximation of the volume of the, of, of the pyramid. So, let's take a look at this particular prism, which is number n. What is its height and what is its base because that's all we need to calculate the volume of the prism as we know it's just multiplication of uh, area of the base times the height all right the height is easy because it's the distance between these two planes and these two planes are on the distance which is equal to h divided by capital n right since i have divided in the very beginning into n equal parts this perpendicular and it's obviously a perpendicular to every plane because they're all parallel among, among themselves so that's the height how about um, the base how about this triangle well first of all let me point out that this triangle a and b and c n uh, is similar to a b c and the similarity it, it's a 3d similarity three-dimensional similarity with uh, center of this particular scaling um, uh, at point S at the apex of the pyramid and um, the scaling factor is basically the scaling factor between SHN divided by SH which is N divided by capital N because there are N uh, small segments up to the plane called beta nth and there are an, a capital N uh, these segments to the beta so SHN relates to SH as lowercase n to uppercase n now obviously the same scaling factor exists with SA n over SA why? Because triangles S, A, N, H, N and S, A, uh, H these two triangles are obviously similar in two-dimensional sense because these planes are parallel so the plane S, A, H cuts two parallel lines so these are parallel obviously uh, and since they are parallel then the, all the angles are equal so obviously they are similar and since they are similar the same proportionality between SHN and SH exists between SAN and SA and the same as SBN and SCN etc so all these uh, uh, sides of these triangles are all proportional and this is the coefficient of proportionality. 
Now, if you remember from the similarity lecture, if you have two flat figures, flat objects, which are similar to each other, and there is a scaling factor, now, um, the area of these two flat objects um, is related as f squared, where f is a scaling factor. So, all linear dimensions are scaled by the factor of f. But all aerial dimensions, like area of a tri triangle in this particular case, are related as f squared. So the area area of triangle A N B N C N divided by the area of triangle A B C as N square over capital N square. Because this is the factor and this is the factor square. So that's basically enough for us to determine the area of um, A and B and C and which is the base of the nth prism. Right? So let me just put here that the area of triangle ABC is lowercase s. Then I can say that the area of triangle a and B and C n is equal to S times this factor. So I know the area of the base of this prism and I know the height of this prism. So I know the volume. So the volume of nth prism is equal to product of area of the base which is S n square over n square times h over n. Now, this is the prism number n. Let me just put it slightly different. Why? Because s and h and capital N are constants in my case and lowercase n is an index because what I have to do right now I have to summarize that would give me the expression for the volume of this um, stacked the summarized volume of the stacked prisms and then if I will have a formula for this I can uh, uh, use some limit theory, uh, put n to infinity, and that would give me the formula for my pyramid. So let's find out what this actually is. If I will summarize this. Well, obviously, constant can be moved out. And here I will have 1 plus 2 square plus 3 square plus etc. plus n square. That's what I have to calculate. Now, this is algebra now. It's not geometry, so I don't really need this. So let me go to algebraic aspect of this. How can I calculate this sum? Well, there is an easy way. You can just find out the formula. <laughs> and uh, if you want to prove it, you can prove it by induction, which is very, very easy. Now, um, if you don't know the formula, uh, which I obviously don't remember, um, I will try to derive it, but I do know the methodology. Here is the methodology. Let's go and put 1 cube plus 2 cube plus etc. plus n cube. It's equal to two cube plus three cube plus etc. plus n cube plus n plus one cube My plus one minus n plus 1 cube, right? Now, this is my sigma n square from 1 to n. This is sigma of n plus 1 
square. Uh, sorry, cube. Cube. One to n. And then plus one minus n plus one cube. Now, why did they do it? Here is why. Let me open it up. n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n plus 1 plus 1 minus n plus 1 cube plus sigma n cube I will not use from 1 to n, it's obvious plus 3 sigma n squared plus 3 sigma n plus uh, n actually, right? Because I'm summarizing 1 n times plus 1 and minus n plus 1 cube. Okay? Okay. Now, why did they do this? Sorry. Well, I did it, I did it for one very, very simple reason. Because now, you see, this can be reduced, and I have basically an equation for this thing right so it's 0 equals 3 sigma n square plus 3 sigma n actually we know what it is um, uh, I, I did it uh, when I was calculating the area of a triangle it's sum of arithmetic progression from 1 to capital N and obviously it's n times n plus 1 divided by 2 plus n plus 1 minus n plus 1 cube. So now we have equation for this guy. And we can determine this uh, sum of n squared. And this is basically the formula. So let me just uh, simplify it as much as possible. So um, let me multiply everything by 2. So I will have 0 equals 6 sigma n square uh, plus 3 n n plus 1 plus 2 n plus 1 minus 2 n plus 1 cube, right? So 6 sigma n square equals to 2 n plus 1 cube um, minus 3 n n plus 1 and minus 2 n plus 1 equals I can factor out n plus 1 and here I will have 2 n plus 1 square minus 3 n minus 2. Okay, which is which is n plus 1 and let me open this up 2n square plus 4n plus 2 minus 3n minus 2 
n plus 1, 2n squared plus n equals n plus 1, n, and 2n plus 1. So, that's 6 sigma. So, 1 sigma of n squared from 1 to n equals to uh, n, n plus 1, 2 n plus 1 divided by 6. That's my final formula for sum of the squares of integer numbers from 1 to capital N. And I can use it here. So this equal to SH divided by N cube times N, N plus 1 Uh, sorry, it was 2n, 2n cube. My, my mistake. 2n cube. Is that right? No, this is 1, but I lost 2 somewhere. Um, SH divided by n ok let me finish this divided by 6 oh no that everything is fine no no everything is fine right because this goes to square right so it's equal to let me multiply this SH divided by N square divided by 6 and here I will have 2N square plus 2N plus N plus 3N plus 1 and 1, 1 that's my formula equals alright so it's SH I will divide by n square, 1 by 1, divided by 6. Uh, 2n square, this will be 2. 3n plus 3 divided by n. This is n, this is n square. And 1 over n square. That's it. Now I'm ready to increase n to infinity. What happens with this formula? Well, obviously, these two members will disappear, and I will have only this one. So my total volume would be SH divided by 3. And this is the final formula for volume of the pyramid. We kind of assumed that this particular process of constructing uh, this step-like um, figure uh, is approximating uh, my pyramid and the volume approximately is equal to the volume of the pyramid and as this capital N goes to infinity it's kind of intuitively obvious although it's not rigorously proven that the volume of this um, uh, figure would go to the volume of the pyramid so there are certain assumptions which I allowed myself just to relate to your intuitive feelings without actually proof and this is one of those in any case this assumption seems to be reasonable and um, in uh, higher um, levels of mathematics this assumption is actually proven that this is really true uh, I just don't want to spend right now much time because again my purpose was not to drive the formula per se but to explain the direction, the methodology, how this formula can be derived. So you basically approximate a complex figure with something simpler which you already know how to deal with, in this case prisms. So I would suggest you to go again through um, the notes of this lecture. It's uh, again it's very educational I believe and what's, imp what's important is, if you can, try to do whatever I just did yourself. Just on a piece of paper, try to derive 
whatever the formula is, because there is nothing uh, which I'm using here in this particular lecture which I had to like remember something. Well, maybe except formula for arithmetic progression. All right, but anyway, it's just again the methodology is important, and I do encourage you to try to go through all these calculations and to get similar um, results. That would be a very good exercise. Well, other than that, that's that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>